Okay, we have a tricky problem here today from MIT Integration B 2025 finals number one. We have the integral of tan x times square root 2 plus square root 4 plus cosine x dx. Okay, first I didn't really know what to do with this one. I wanted to, I was thinking, I was hoping that somehow this would be a perfect square, but I couldn't get that to work. So what I tried instead was just a u substitution for this whole thing here. So we'll set u equal to square root 2 plus square root 4 plus cosine x. And then I don't think I want to try to take a derivative of all this. I mean, maybe it would work, but... So what I tried to do instead was simplify it first. So first I can square both sides and we get u squared equals 2 plus square root 4 plus cosine x. Then I can bring the 2 on the other side of the equation and square everything again. So if I do that, we have u squared minus 2 equal to just 4 plus cosine x. Dropping absolute value, just because we know this needs to be positive. And plus cosine can't be less than minus 1. So, so now just multiplying out the left side, we have u to the fourth minus 4u squared plus 4 equals this stuff. But now what we can do is cancel out the 4, subtract it on both sides. That goes away. And then I was thinking maybe we could take an inverse, but I think it might be nicer just to leave it like this as an expression for cosine. We can actually take a derivative of this thing. Derivative of cosine is going to be minus sine x dx. Derivative of this side, just reversing the sides here, this is going to become 4u cubed minus 8u du. And then I think we have everything we need if we just rearrange this a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of rewrite this the way I want it. So first, let's bring the square root over here in front. For tan x, I'm going to break this up. We'll have it as, I'll write it as sine x um, all, all over cosine x dx. To get, so we have sine x dx. Watch, well, we have minus sine x dx. Let's turn this into a minus sign, and then I can bring a minus out front. So let's just review what we have. The square root again, this is going to be u. Everything over here. This is going to be this stuff. And for cosine x, we have an expression right here to use. So I'll go ahead and substitute. We have a minus sign in front. It's going to become u. Then I was going to make it, I'm used to it being du, but it's actually this stuff. So we have u times 4u cubed minus 8u du. And cosine x is this. So we end up with u to the fourth minus 4u squared. Then from here, let's see, I can, I can multiply in the u, and I also can factor a 4 out of this. So when I do that, let's see, if I factor out a 4, we have minus 4 in front of the integral. The numerator becomes u to the 4th minus 2u squared now. All over the same denominator, u to the 4th minus 4u squared. Well, since we almost have 1 here, let's just fix it and make that happen. So I'm going to turn this into a minus 4u squared. And so I don't change it, I just need to add 2u squared, so that's still minus 2u squared here. But then for that, let's use that to create a second integral, multiplying it with the minus 4 over here, I think. So how that's going to look, let's do it as minus 8, and then the integral is just going to be u squared over this thing. But now what I want to do here on this one is let's factor out a u squared, so I can write it as u squared, u squared minus 4, du because that way u squareds cancel and we just have one over here on the right. This whole integral cancels and this is just one. And so let me get a little space and we'll try to finish this off. So now in the first integral, of course, that's just going to be u when we integrate. So we get minus 4u right here. Here, I actually like the formula for inverse hyperbolic tanch, but I'm not going to use it. I'm going to try to match MIT solution. So they're going to do it in terms of natural log. I think the tanch is more calm. I think the inverse tanch is more compact, but maybe natural log is more familiar. So let's just do it MIT's way. So using the formula for this, we're going to have one half in front. This is going to be like a, actually, let me just show the formula for this kind of integral over here to the side. So when we have x squared minus a squared, this thing's going to be one over two a natural log x minus a over x plus a. And I think technically there's absolute value, even though we're not going to need it in our problem. So going to this formula, 1 over 2a, where our a value is going to be 2. This is actually going to become 1 fourth right here. Then we're going to have natural log u minus 2 over u plus 2. 
I dropped the absolute value just knowing because u, this is always going to be positive. And then even with the minus 2, it's not going to matter because this is going to be greater than 2, what's coming out of the square root. So all we need to finish it off is just a back substitute with our u value. So for my final solution on it, let me get a little space. So for my final solution, let's see what we have. It's going to be minus 4 square root 2 plus square root 4 plus cosine x. This here is going to become minus 2 natural log. And this part is a real mess because we're plugging in this big square root here. So it's going to be square root 2 plus square root 4 plus cosine x minus 2 over the same thing, plus 2, add a plus c, and that's it. And so as you can see, the answer is a real mess. That's kind of why I want to use the inverse tangent. I mean, I guess at least it would clean up this a little bit. You'd only have to write this once, but I could see where someone in the actual integration me they could mess up just writing it because you had to write, you had to write this square root into the answer three times, or at least two times if you did it with tangent, they would accept that. Okay, there you go. That's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.